Well, hello there. My name is Beth Gaffin. I'm the Media Literacy Coordinator here at the Peabody Public Library. And this class here is set up to go at your pace, which means that you can take this class as slow as you want, or you can go through it pretty fast if you want. Um, but at any rate, you can get through it um, pretty quickly. So. Um, also, if you are a part of the Computer Class Class Incentive Program, you're going to definitely want to be hearing for your code so you can get marked down for your class so you can win some prizes. If you're not familiar with this program, you can get in contact with me at the library and I can explain it all to you, no problem. Uh, without further ado, I want to welcome you to Microsoft Word Basic. The first thing that I want to talk to you about when it comes to Microsoft Word is being able to identify your icon. And whether you have Windows 7 or if you have Windows 8 or Windows 8.1, um, either way the program is the same. Just being able to locate it um, is something that you need to, to figure out on which system you're using. Um, to the left of the screen you see I have a Windows 7 icon. It shows you exactly how it looks if it's on your desktop. And if you look to the right, the Windows 8 or 8.1, um, it it's obviously different and most of the newer computer softwares are coming out um, with the Windows 8.1 version. So you can definitely see a distinct difference in those. Why don't you take a moment right now and go ahead and pause this show and um, open up or try to identify where your icon is. Find out which one's yours. Go ahead. Once we've identified which icon we are using, um, and we need to figure out how to open it. So with Windows 8, you would just click directly on that icon. Uh, with Windows 7, you would do the same thing. But there do come those times where when we start up our computer, for whatever reason, we don't really know why, but our icons may just not be there, which means um, there's been a glitch in our computer and for some reason they're just not showing up. So this is another way that you can actually open up Microsoft Word uh, by going to the start menu, which is indicated by that red arrow there. Um, you can put your mouse on top of where it says all programs. You don't have to click it. It will automatically pull up a menu and within that menu you can find the Microsoft Office file. Again, you don't have to click it. By just putting your mouse on top of it, it's going to give you another menu, which tells you all of the Microsoft Office programs Office programs that are in that file. So as you can see, um, by going to Start, All Programs, Microsoft Office, you can get that window up and then you'd be able to choose Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, there's also Access and Outlook. Why don't you go ahead and pause this right now and see if you can do that on your own computer. Go ahead and start with that Start and then the All Programs. And remember, you don't have to click on those. On the All Program, you can just place your mouse cursor on top of it and it's going to automatically pull up that window for you. Um, you can push it, it's not going to hurt anything, but it's not necessary. Um, and then once you do that, it's going to pull up the Microsoft, you're going to look for the Microsoft Office and you can scan over that and then it's going to pull up um, another menu. Go ahead and take a moment right now and pause the slide and give it a try. Thanks. Just like with any other class, you're going to have terminology. You're going to have to know uh, certain words so you have a better understanding of what you're studying. And this class isn't any different. There's going to be some words you're going to be hearing throughout the class uh, that you just may not know or you're not real familiar with. So I have just um, picked a few in the next two slides that uh, we will be referring to. So the first one on here is save, which is a button in the quick access toolbar that saves an existing document. And then you have the ribbon, which is a screen element that displays buttons for accessing office features and commands. And then we have save as, which is a feature that allows the user to change the attributes of a file, such as the location, the file name, the file type, and then we have the Home tab. Uh, this is a primary tab, which contains the more frequently used commands. And then we have the File, which is a collection of data stored in one unit, identified by a file name. It can be a document, a picture, audio, a video stream, data library, application, or another type of collection of data. 
Uh, there's a cursor which points on a display screen uh, where the next character or a space is to be entered. That's using your mouse there and the next word is mouse which is a hand-operated electronic device that controls the coordinates of a cursor on your computer screen as you move it around on a pad, uh, which would be called your mouse pad. So go ahead and look these over and be familiar with them. And the next slide has more terminology. So more terminology that you may be hearing today, uh, page layout, that's the way the text, the graphics, the size, and space are organized on a document. Uh, the font size, that's going to be the height of characters and the points. Uh, the orientation is the changing of the angle in which the data is displayed. Uh, bold is a font style that makes text appear in a darker type. Font styles is the pane that allows you to change your font. That red underline that you get means that the flag text is not in the words dictionary. And the green underline indicates that there may be an incorrect grammatically made statement. So go ahead and read these over so you're a little bit more familiar. And remember, at any time, you can pause the slideshow and you can go back to the slides four and five and refresh yourself on terminology. Go ahead and take a minute and just look over these terms. To have a better understanding of Microsoft Word, we need to have a better understanding of what all these little tabs and, and buttons um, do, what they're, where they are, what they are. So this here is just parts of Microsoft Word. Um, it highlights what all of your functions are. Um, it's showing you the quick access toolbar, the ribbon tabs, the title bar, the window controls, uh, the handy help button, the office button, the tab selector, Again, another view of the ribbon from a bottom angle, your horizontal ruler, your view ruler button, you've got your vertical scroll bar, the vertical ruler, uh, your browse buttons, you've got your zoom options, your view buttons, your status bar, your text area, and your document information. Why don't you go ahead and pause this slideshow. Go ahead and if you don't have Microsoft Word open yet, go ahead and open it up and just kind of take a look um, at the parts of Microsoft Word and so you have a better familiarity to um, your unused document at this time. So go ahead and pause this and, and just take a quick glance. Slide 7 is just showing you that this is another view. Um, your version may be just a little bit different, so instead of having that office button, you may actually have a file tab. Both buttons are exactly the same. They're just a different version. This is a 2007 version, whereas the slide before um, is going to be your 2010 or 13 version. So it's just showing you a little bit of difference. Um, although it's it's the same, it's, it is slightly different in um, the way that the tabs look. So you can see that you know if the slide before didn't quite look like the Microsoft Word that you have this one here should look a little bit more like what you're familiar with so um, just take a quick glance at this one and compare it to what you have and compare it to the slide before so now that we know how to identify our icon and we know some basic terminology that we're going to be hearing today and we know the parts of Word what about opening a Word document well, what's really nice is that once you you open it up and you double click on that icon or whether you're going through the start menu, um, once you actually open up Word itself, uh, that is a brand new document. You have just opened up your very first Word document. It's brand new. And you'll know that by the way that it's titled. On this particular slide and picture, it shows you that this says Document 1, uh, Microsoft Word. That's letting you know that um, the Document 1 is a default that Microsoft Word puts on there. It's not a saved file yet, so it's just a brand new one. And that's what's a really nice feature about having Microsoft Word is once you actually open the program, you've already created your first document. It's so easy and so simple, and there's nothing more to it than that. Why don't you go ahead and pause the slideshow right now, and if you haven't worked on opening up Microsoft Word, do so now, and just kind of play around with it. You can even type on it, just like they have here in the picture where it says screenshot. Just kind of, just kind of open it up and take a quick look and realize that once you have opened that tab, you have just created yourself a new document. That easy. Give it a try. Go ahead. I'll wait.
Now, once you've opened up Microsoft Office and you've created that document by really not doing a whole lot other than just opening it, and you've typed something on it, you're probably going to want to save now. Okay, so this slide here is going to show you how you can save a Word document. Now keep in mind that the pictures on this screen um, are very similar to the 2010 version. That um, red arrow in that very first picture there that's pointing to the Office button, that would be your File button if you have a version um, older than 2010, meaning if you have 2003 or 2007, you would push your File button instead of the Office button. In this one, it's the office button. So that red arrow there indicates in that first picture that we're going to push that button because we want to save that document that we just created by opening Microsoft Word. And then once we've pushed that office button, we're going to get a menu that comes down. And that next picture, followed by that blue arrow, shows you uh, the menu options that we're going to talk about in the next couple of slides. Um, this one here has the Save and the Save As. For what we're going to do, we're going to use the Save As feature. Um, the difference between Save and Save As is that Save As is a feature that um, puts your particular file in a location. Because you've opened it up and it just says Document 1, it doesn't really have a home. So we have to make a home for it. And the best way to do that is by hitting the Save As. Once you hit the Save As button, you're going to get another menu, which is followed by that bottom left picture there, because they're going to want you to name it, because you can't just put it in a home with no name. So then you would rename it whatever you want it to be. Let's say it's lunch plans for today. So we would put lunch plans in our file name and then we would hit save. And then that file goes into a default in our documents. Okay, um, Microsoft Word automatically puts these files into your documents uh, file which is located in your libraries um, and computers. And um, that very last picture there would just kind of show you what it would look like in my documents if you needed to go back and find it. You would click on my documents and then you would find that particular file name that you just renamed. So let's recap this. Um, you've just got done opening up a Word document and you're just now finishing up your lunch plans and you've typed them all out and you're ready to save it because you're, you know, you're done for the day and, and you just want to save it. So the best way we're going to do that is either hit that office button or your file button and then you're going to get that menu. Uh, we want to hit save as because it's a brand new one. If we would hit save it's not going to work quite the same because that button works a little bit differently. Uh, that's going to be the button you would use if you needed to go back into this file and make corrections. So for this purpose, we're going to use Save As because we need to find our, our new lunch plan document, a home. Um, and then once we hit Save As, we're going to rename it to lunch plans or whatever you want your document to be renamed. We're going to hit Save. It's going to go directly into My Documents because that's where Microsoft Office will put it and then you can go in and retrieve it and see if you can open it back up. Go ahead and take a minute and give this all a try, trying it out by the steps and you can either pause this, minimize this, do what you need to do so that you can see your Microsoft Word and that you're able to see the features that I'm talking about. Okay, I just want to touch a little bit more on making sure that you understand the difference between save and save as. So in order for there to be a save, there has to be a document. So once you have finished typing your document, this document will need a home. So by clicking that Save As, you're telling the computer, I'm looking for a home for my document. Once you click Save As, you can rename your document and save it, Save As, in a default provided by Microsoft Word, which is going to be under My Document. Once you finish this, you may decide later on that you want to go in and edit that document. You would look in My Documents for that file name that you created for it and double click it to open. Now you can edit it. When you are finished, you can now just hit Save instead of Save As. It will automatically save the document to the original file name that you created for it to begin with and it will probably ask you if you want to replace the existing. You would click Yes um, in this particular situation unless you wanted to keep the original. If you want to keep the unedited original document, that's the one you clicked before you edited it, um, 
then you can just resave the edited document using the Save As feature. So by doing this, you will have to rename the document, um, maybe adding it onto its edited version or Lunch Plans 2 um, to save your file. This now gives you the original document and it gives you the edited version and it'll be under two different file names. Okay, so this would be good if um, you pre-made yourself a letter. Let's say you have a letter that's going out to a um, hundred different people and each one says, Dear John, Dear Jane, Dear Nancy. Okay, this is a good example. So you would make your original document and you would go in and you would save it as my letter or whatever you want to call your letter and then you um, decide that you need to go in and you need to edit the name so each name is different so you would open up that original document you would highlight the name take it out put the new name in so now you can either save it as it is or you can resave it so you still have that original but now you have the edited version too so why don't you take a moment right now and just remember there's nothing you can do on Microsoft Word or any of the Microsoft programs that you can't undo. Okay, so go ahead and take a moment and go ahead and go into that um, file that we already created, the lunch plans or whatever you titled yours. Double click on that and go in and just change something about it. Add something to the bottom, um, a little memo to yourself, and then I want you to save it as again as something different. Maybe lunch plans two, lunch plans edited, and now you're going to see in my document you're going to have your original lunch plan and you're also going to have your edited lunch plan version. So go ahead and take a moment right now and give that a try. This next slide shows you how to create a new document. So once you double click on Microsoft Office and you've created a document right then and there, uh, let's say that you want to have two documents going at the same time. Um, maybe one is for one thing and one is for another, but they go together. The best way to create a new document or to file or to find um, a new document to create would be to go to your file button or your office button, the circle or the file, and you would come down to where it says new. Um, when you put it on new and click that, um, the next option coming up is going to say blank document. By pushing that blank document, it's going to give you um, the picture to the right, which is a brand new document as if you had just double clicked on the icon. So go ahead and give that a try. If you have a computer class pass, your secret code is Microsoft Word Made Easy. Write this code down and let me know the code so I can get you marked down for the class. Okay, so now that we know how to find our icon, we know how to open our icon, um, which is Microsoft Word. We know how to find Microsoft Word. We know how to open Microsoft Word. Um, we have a better understanding of some terminology. Uh, we also have a better understanding of the parts of Microsoft Word, how to save, how to save as, how to create a new document. So now with those documents that we've already created, uh, we need to find out how we can go in and we can open them. Okay, and that's called an open um, opening an existing document. So there's actually two ways you can accomplish this. Um, the first way would be to go into your computer all the way around. Um, that's that picture to the left. And you could go into your libraries where your documents are, and it shows you there. And then you can go down and find your document, which is indicated by the word icon. And there's several um, in that file to the left. Another way you can do it is just going directly through Microsoft Word, and that's by clicking on the icon and opening up Word, and then you can hit that File button or that Office button in the top left corner, and once you do that, you can go into Open. And when you do that, it's going to open up the recent documents that you did, um, and you would be able to find it there also. Um, it may even pull up a box for you to go into My Documents. So this isn't really hard. I want you to try to find that document on those lunch plans or whatever you named it um, by getting out of Microsoft Word, closing out of everything, minus our little PowerPoint here, and finding it on your own. So go in and see if you can find your existing documents that we have created together with this slideshow. Go ahead. So 
with that existing file still up that you just got done opening through your documents, um, now we need to know how we can close these out. And there's actually three ways that you can close it. Um, the first way would be just by hitting that red X in the top right corner, which is indicated by the picture in front of you. Um, or you could go to that file or office button and push it. And there's actually a close button, which is indicated in front of you also. Or you can take that file and office button all the way down to the exit and push out of that. Now, if you have created something or if you've edited your document, it's probably going to pull up a box to ask you if you want to save what you have done. At that point, you can decide whether you want to um, save it as it is existing just by hitting save, or you can decide whether you want to save it as a different file. Um, that way you have your original and you have the edited version. So this is how you would close a document, and there's three ways to do it. And when you do so, you're probably going to be asked um, to save it. So why don't you take just a few minutes here and go ahead and explore that a little bit on the three different ways you can close the document and on saving your document as well. So up to this point, everything we've done has been very, very basic. Um, you have typed a, typed a document and you have opened it, you've closed it, um, but now we're going to try to get a little bit fancy and make that document look just a little bit better. Um, if you want to, you can either start a brand new document by doing this or you can open one of the existing ones that we've done today. And what we're going to do is we're going to use some fonts. And what fonts are, are they are going to change the appearance of your lettering. So in that very first top left picture, we've got our home tab, we've got our font size button, and we've got our font type button. The font type is actually going to change the style of the lettering, whereas the font size button is going to change whether they're large or small. So to the right, once we click on that font type button, we're going to actually get a font list and you can see it there, okay? So on the top left, all of the pictures, as you can see, have a highlighted area. And by highlighting, the way you do this is you take your mouse and you put it whatever it is you're wanting to highlight and you click the left side of the mouse and you just drag it across until you see this blue. And you let go of the left click on your mouse to stop highlighting. By doing that, you're telling Microsoft Word, I want to do something with just this part of it, okay? So in this situation, they want to change the font and the font sizes. So they have taken their cursor and put it where they want to highlight on their paragraph of what they want to change. And then they've gone to their font type button that has given them a font list. Now, once you're in the font list options, um, by having that area highlighted, you can actually put your mouse just on top of the different font styles which are in that list. You don't have to click anything. You can just put, them on, put your cursor on top of it and it's going to automatically change the appearance right before your eyes. And it's only going to change it in that highlighted area that you've highlighted. Okay. So once you've done that, um, you can select the different font styles that you want. Um, by clicking it, um, it's going to take you out of that font style option, and it's just going to change it. So you can always go back in and change it again by hitting your font button and getting your font list back. But if you're not really wanting to change it, then you may just want to take your cursor and browse over the, over the different font styles and you'll see what's going on. You'll see it changing right before your eyes. So on that left bottom, you can see that they selected their font type and it changed their font only on the highlighted area. Okay? And remember, the way that we highlight is by putting our mouse cursor in the area that we want and we left click and we just kind of pull it across and up and it's automatically going to highlight it. But don't let go of that left until you're ready to be done highlighting it. You keep the left button on your mouse as you highlight. So. Once you've actually changed your font, um, you can now decide if you want to make it bigger or not bigger. Um, in that very, that bottom left picture, you can see that it says selected font type. Next to it is a number. It says 11. Okay, that is the font size that they've chosen. 
12 is typically the size that you would use if you're just typing a normal letter, um, but they have 11 on there. It must be a default through um, Microsoft Word unless they chose that. So if you want to, without actually changing the number, you can go to the font grow button and the font shrink button. So the grow will move it up and the shrink will move it down. So right now go ahead and take a moment and either create yourself a new document or open one of those existing documents that we've already done and try highlighting an area that you want to use and changing your fonts around a little bit. And remember, you can't mess anything up, so don't be afraid, just have some fun. That was pretty fun, wasn't it? It's really fun to work with fonts um, and stuff like that because you can use so many things with them. So now we're going to talk about fonts and color. So as you can see, um, they still have an area highlighted like we've done in our own. And by clicking on that A with the little color, which is indicated by the arrow in that very first picture, that's going to actually change the font color. Um, that's just going to change the letters itself. So by doing that, Moving on to the next um, picture to the right, um, with the green circle, it's showing you that once you push that, it's going to give you that menu down, and it has all those different colors in there. Um, but let's say you're not really finding the color that you want. You can actually hit more colors, and that bottom left um, picture is going to show up, and you can actually manually go in and pick a color. And by that last picture there and having it highlighted, um, it's going to change those font colors to whatever color that you picked. So go ahead and take a minute right now and try your highlighting feature that I already showed you by using your mouse and dragging it across and try changing some colors around and just kind of using your fonts and your colors. Exploring with fonts is super fun. And the next slide that we're going to go over is highlighting words um, or paragraphs within a document that you're using. And that real big picture there to the right kind of shows you um, some history that they've pulled up and they've put it into a Word document and they're taking notes on it and they just want to highlight certain areas of it um, so they can remember. So a great few, uh, feature that Microsoft Word has is that it can highlight. So um, that very top left picture there that says um, has computer literacy under it. Um, you already know where the font colored uh, tab is. Well right to the left of that um, is your highlighting feature. So if you do the same thing as if you were highlighting it to change your font style um, to this, as it shows you there, you would highlight the area that you're wanting um, and which is indicated in that picture below with that blue area. They're, they're wanting to highlight English 114-001. They're going to highlight it. And by highlighting it, they're going to just put their mouse there and they're going to left click and they're going to slide it across like you've been doing with fonts and colors before. Except the difference now is you're going to actually change the color. So by clicking that AB button, which is right next to the A where the font colors were, you're going to be able to pick a color that you can highlight with. Um, that very first picture shows you that they picked turquoise. They highlighted it with their mouse and then they're actually going to highlight it with color. So that color is going to stay. So now it's going to be bolded out to them uh, the way that they want it. So that next slide, or the, not the slide, but the next picture over shows you uh, that history of medicine that they're doing. They're taking notes on it. And by just highlighting across, putting our mouse on the area that we think is important, left clicking and dragging it across, we're going to get that blue highlight like we're used to seeing, like we've been using with the fonts and colors. But now we're actually going to change the color overall. So by doing that, you'd hit that AB button and you can see that you have several options and in that particular one they chose yellow because it stands out a little bit better whereas the one before they chose turquoise. So why don't you take a moment right now and just either use one of your existing documents um, that you've already created, the lunch plans or whatever you named it, um, or create a new document. You can start typing whatever you want, which we've learned how to do that so far. And um, just practice highlighting important things for yourself. It's great for note taking. It's great for presentations if you want to remember specific things. So just take a moment right now and work with the highlighting of the words or highlighting of paragraphs. The last thing that I want to talk to you about uh, for Microsoft Word Basic is going to be your page layout tab or your orientation. Okay, So in that top left picture we can see that there is a page layout on our tabs 
um, which is next to insert. Once you hit that page layout feature, underneath it is orientation. Orientation is the way that you want your paper set up. So you can either have your paper a long way or you can have your paper turned where it's a landscape way. So there's two options. There's portrait or there's landscape. Portrait's going to be that size of um, the tall. That's your typical when you get a letter in the mail or something like that. That's a portrait version. Whereas the landscape version actually turns it and makes it longer. Okay, so that would be good for calendars and things to that effect. This is a really great feature to have, especially if you are typing something that is kind of falling off of your paper. It's not one to stay on there. Being able to change the orientation style, the page layout of your document could really make a world of difference when it comes to um, what you're trying to accomplish. So go ahead and take a moment right now and go to the page layout feature and under that is orientation and you can either pick portrait or you can pick landscape and just kind of flip them back and forth to see the differences. All right, well, we had a lot of fun today with Microsoft Word, and I hope that I didn't go too fast. Um, what's nice about this PowerPoint is that you can pause it at any time um, just to kind of keep yourself up to pace. It's at your own pace, and it's very easy to follow. Um, I just want to recap what we've learned today. We learned how to identify our icon, uh, whether it's appearing to us or not. We've learned a few ways that we can do that. Uh, we've learned how to open up a Word document. We've learned some very useful terms uh, that we will be hearing quite a bit as we go along with the program. Uh, we learned how to open, save, and close as well as creating a new document. Uh, we learned how to use some really great features on fonts and colors within our own document. And we learned how the page layout and the orientation works, meaning you know how we want ours to look. So if you had fun with Microsoft Word, you're going to have a lot of fun with Microsoft Word Intermediate Basic. Um, I call it Intermediate Basic because it's still a very basic class, but it teaches you a little bit more into Microsoft Word. So once we get into Microsoft uh, Basic Word Intermediate, you're going to learn some more terminology and some more definitions. You're going to use some more of those font options that we didn't talk about today. Um, we're also going to learn how to bold, italics, underline. We're going to learn how to cut, copy, and paste. Um, you're also going to learn how to set those margins. You might want them set a particular, um, at a particular place where, you know, the words are coming in at certain places. We're going to learn how to align our text, and you're going to learn how to use text boxes. So um, we're going to be exploring Microsoft Word um, at a whole nother level. So I really hope that I get the opportunity uh, to, to work with you again, and I hope you had fun with Microsoft Word Basic. I just want to take a moment and thank you for being a part of Microsoft Word Basics streamed for uh, your convenience. I hope that you have learned a whole lot more about Microsoft Word than you knew before you started. Um, please take a moment if you have any questions or concerns or anything like that in regards um, to this PowerPoint um, and email the email address that's listed there for you. Um, and I do get those directly. Or you can call the library and I'd be more than happy to talk to you. Um, again, I, I want to thank you for being a part of the Microsoft Word um, basic experience, and I hope, to, uh, I hope to see you or either here at the library taking a class, or I hope that you get the opportunity to look at Microsoft Word Intermediate, or even other future um, classes that will be streamed online. So good luck to you, and thank you for participating. And just like anything else, we have to give credit where credit is due. And this presentation could not have been possible uh, without the, pe the following people listed, and as well as you. I couldn't even have this um, if it wasn't for you, the people that want it. So again, thank you for being a part of Microsoft Word, and I look forward in you seeing future classes. And thank you to all the people that contributed to make this PowerPoint uh, what it needed to be. Thank you.